lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, Dr. Keel here, and I want to talk about an interesting study. It's called Comparison of Weight Loss Among Named Diet Programs in Overweight and Obese Adults, a Meta-Analysis, published by Johnston et al. in the journal JAMA. And the objective was to determine weight loss outcomes for popular diets based on diet class, as described by macronutrient composition and named diet. So some background here. Uh, obesity in America has skyrocketed in the last 60 years. In 1960, 10% of men and 15% of women were obese. Now in 2015, more than 35% of men and women are obese. This staggering increase has been accompanied by an increased incidence of diabetes, stroke, heart attack, and cancer, just to name a few. As our waistbands have thickened, so too have the various dietary and weight loss programs designed at trimming this new weight. Some of these have been fad diets that have been quick to rise and quick to fall. Others, like the Mediterranean diet, the Atkins diet, and the DASH diet, have had more longevity. Most of these weight loss programs are broadly available to the public through bookstores, the internet, television, social media, and healthcare providers. Subsequently, there is much debate over which diet, if any, is superior to others in terms of weight loss and disease prevention. Healthcare providers and dietitians are often asked which diet is most effective for weight loss without a clear answer. And so the authors of this study use network meta-analysis to assess the relative effectiveness of different popular diets in improving weight loss. This study was a meta-analysis of 48 randomly controlled clinical trials. And just to be clear, a meta-analysis is the gold standard for comparing multiple different studies and combining the results into one comprehensive publication. In order to be included, candidate studies had to include overweight or obese adults with a BMI over 25, randomized to a popular self-administered named diet, and also report their change in weight or BMI at three months follow-up or longer. The main outcomes of interest were weight loss and body mass index at 6 and 12 months. They also classified diets based on macronutrient composition. For example, low-carb included Atkins, South Beach, and the Zone Diet. Moderate included Biggest Loser, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Volumetrics, and Weight Watchers. And the low-fat were the Ornish Diet and the Rosemary Conley Diet. The results were somewhat surprising. Ultimately, 48 randomized trials, including 7,300 individuals, were included. Compared with no diet, the largest weight loss was associated with low-carb diets at 8 kilograms at 6 months and 7 at 12 months. And low-fat diets also about 8 kilograms at 6 months and 7 kilograms at 12 months. Weight loss differences between individual diets was essentially none. And behavioral support appeared to have more impact at 6 months compared to 12 months and exercise had more impact on weight loss at 12 months of follow-up. And so in conclusion, you can say significant weight loss of approximately 8 kilograms or 17.5 pounds occurred with any of the low-carb or low-fat diets. There was minimal difference in weight loss at 6 and 12 months between any of the individual named diets. These results support the growing notion that net caloric intake is a larger determinant of weight loss than the macronutrient makeup of the specific diet. It also supports the practice of choosing a diet that an individual is most likely to adhere to in the long term in order to maintain sustained weight loss.